Hello again, Subaru fans. In cartoon form, that is. We have a churro queue of the first Subaru, I believe, called the Subaru 360. Uh, though I can't remember if 1966 was the first year. This might just be that year of this car, but when the first 360 came out, I don't know. But that 360 means 360 cc's. So this is a really small car in real life. It's a K-Class car. Alright, so this thing is from 2005. I have never seen this packaging before, but it says number one, so I'm assuming there's other ones. It's interesting, there's a nice little background back in there. So, is this all used? You know, it might be new actually. Let's see on the back here. So it's like a cardboard diorama. You know what, I'm not going to just tear this box open. I'm kind of curious what this thing is actually like, this packaging. So let me back this out. Fans.com, a little blister holding it down. And then, yes, if you wanted to, I guess you could just display it with this little backdrop. Eh, it's not bad, it's pretty neat actually. But, uh, well, you know, maybe I'll save that for like a plastic case. Yeah, maybe a different plastic case, maybe not this exact model. So, I think I'll actually keep that, that, that piece of paper. Alright. So if you get this white residue on these old chargers, just wipe it off and there's no difference. I think these tire, uh, tires might be made of silicone. <laughs> Alright, let's see how they did here on this guy. Oh, there's more white stuff on that front tire. So this, our, uh, this Subaru 360, some of them have these big eyebrows or cowls, some don't. Some have these different, uh, these are flush vents here on this one. But then if you look at this one, they're metallic sticking out, kind of like on this churro queue. But then this has like horizontal tail lamps. This has vertical ones, so I pulled up this one, and that has more vertical tail lamps and only half of a chrome intake back there. Some are hard tops, some are soft tops, so a lot of changes apparently were made uh, with this particular car over the years. So this has a standard... Uh, Stamp steel Cherokee wheels I've seen before. They're just raw, swirly silver plastic. So usually just painting these silver will make them look nice, but I'm gonna do a wheel swap. Uh, orange turn signal. I don't know what this would be. Oh, probably representing the mirror or something, even though it's just a bump. This is a door handle because it's a suicide door. It actually the hinges back here. A little deflector for the rear fender and then the intake to the rear engine. <laughs> Uh, it's just silver on the headlights here and some orange turn signals. A little bit of a bump there. Would have been nice to have a, you know, grill there like the real car. But this does have some printed on wiper blades. And I guess this must be a hard top one. I think this might be a piece of fiberglass on the real one if I recall. This side is no different. And in the rear we have these vertical tail lamps and some sort of box here that I do see on that rear white car photograph. Alright, so number one in this series, although I don't know what that series translates to, if anyone knows, please leave a comment. And then, uh, yeah, base is silver, tells you what it is. Standard construction, so let me take this guy apart, and uh, you'll see how they take a clear piece of plastic and paint it very well. there it's just you know clear plastic a lot of dust or something going on in here or yeah some sort of I don't know I actually that's paint overspray I think it's paint dust I guess with a q-tip you can get it out but anyways from the outside the windows are pretty dark so it doesn't even matter you can't see that dust okay so now what I do is I take this hat motor out and that's trapping the front axle this is a production dial, so it tells you this thing was made in the fourth month of 2005. And then I pop in a, a motor that I've taken the, the axle out of. You just pry these two halves apart, remove the axle, and you can save it and put this back together so it works again. So I have a whole bag of those uh, 
axles and somewhere else. And then for you new guys, you know, I do this very often, but I'm always trying to show, you know, newcomers what I do here. So I put in that spare motor because I'm going to use poster board putty to mount some wheels. Sometimes I use like Hot Wheels or other brands wheels, but I have a bunch of 3D printed wheels from a while ago that I have yet to use. This car is so organic weird looking, I'm going to go the opposite. These are called Yokohama Advan YH wheels. These funky little JDM wheels here. They're real wheels, classic JDM wheels. So, now this poster board buddy. This one is called a uh, Uhu Potafix Pro. It's the only gray or dark one I've seen. A lot of them are like white or yellow or blue, but naturally I prefer a dark one. But honestly, any color works because you're never going to see the putty when you put the model down. I guess if you're really low angled, you might see it, but it's in shadow, so... Well, I guess if it was a super bright yellow, you might see the putty, but you don't have to use too much. And then it won't stick out like this is actually too much. But another great thing about this poster board putty is it never dries out and it also doesn't stain anything. It doesn't leave any marks from my experience so far using it. So it's really easy to set camber and steering as well. So let's camber that out and uh, maybe steer this a little bit. Right. So really fun, really easy to do wheel swaps and stuff. I like it. It's pretty weird having such geometric wheels on such a bug shaped uh, vehicle. It does look like a Japanese Volkswagen Beetle, doesn't it? Alright, so I actually do have 164 scale versions of this car. So the first one is made by Konami. Oh, my sticker on the bottom says this car was out between 1958 and 1971. So the photograph is just a newer version. And then I have one, uh, it's like a station wagon version, it's just called the Subaru 360 Custom. And this one is by TLV, Tamiko Limited Vintage. So, this, this Jorah Q is quite massive, because in real life these cars are quite minuscule. So, but anyways, uh, I'm down with it. It's pretty cool. It's a strange looking vehicle in real life. And actually, the, this Q doesn't even look that bad to me because it's such a weird looking car. I mean, look at it. The, the real car itself looks like a cartoon. I mean, why is, a, why is it so raised in the front and low in the back? I think maybe because the roads were poor back there in the 60s. Maybe it's meant to go on like f dirt roads, farm roads or something. Eh, I'm not sure. Let me, give me a second here, I'm going to pull out some churro cues. Alright, so another competing car would be the Honda N360. So again, a 360cc K-Class car. So that one has some 3D printed uh, wheels. I think they were called Super River wheels. They're JDM wheels of some sort. A modern Subaru small car would be the R2. And that one I have 3D printed wheels. Those are the original OEM style wheels. Here's a Subaru Impreza WRX with 3D printed wheels. And then another small car is a smart car. But this one has some sort of existing brand's wheels. I don't know if those are Hot Wheels wheels or Majorettes or, or what, but uh, I just got a grab bag of used wheels, but I can tell they're cheap wheels because they have an axle hole. So, let's give you a little top view here. And now it's time for this guy to spin on its own. Alright, so today we're going to pull out a one of these little baseball characters. I don't know what this franchise is. I didn't bother translating that, but I got a few of them. All right, well, it's another uh, interesting churro cue. It, it actually doesn't even look that goofy because the real car is so goofy looking, right? 
but uh, I think it looks kind of interesting to have those really angular wheels again so I'm cool with it that's part of the fun for me for this hobby swapping out customizing and stuff so hopefully you guys appreciate that and if not well just watch someone else's channel <laughs> Just kidding. I appreciate you guys checking this out, though. I know everyone's time is valuable. So, uh, all right. Well, thank you, and I'll see you in the next Joroki review. Bye.